Oh, Jesus, we know that we have life through you. We only have life through you. Life is found in you. We rejoice in you that you were willing to come to this earth and give your life as a sacrifice for those who would put their trust in you. We pray now that during this part of our service that you would enable us by your grace to remember you well. And we pray it in your name, O oh Jesus. Amen. At this time of our service, we're going to take a few minutes to remember our Lord Jesus. And to do that, we're going to be looking at a passage in which God provides Old Testament Israel with a type that points them forward to the atoning work of Jesus Christ on the cross. So if you have your Bibles with you, will you turn with me to Leviticus chapter 16, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. We're going to be looking at verses 7 through 10 together. If you don't actually have a Bible, we encourage you to obtain one as soon as possible so that you can begin reading God's word for yourself. The setting here is that Israel is in the wilderness. God has liberated them from slavery in Egypt. They are heading towards the promised land and God is giving them his law for them. And again and again in the Old Testament law, God tells Israel, I am holy. I am holy. I am holy. I am holy. And because I am holy, I am separate from all kind of sin. But as you read the Old Testament law, you find something else. You find that in addition to being a holy God, God is a merciful God. And he would provide a way in which sinful man could have atonement for their sin. In this passage, we're going to see that God provides Israel with an annual observance that was to be performed, be performed by the priest. And it involved two goats and a tent of meeting and the wilderness. So as we read our passage today, let's take note of the role of the two goats and be thinking about how these goats point us to the work of Jesus at the cross. So let's read verses 7 through 10 of Leviticus 16 together. Aaron shall take the two goats and present them before Yahweh at the doorway of the tent of meeting. And Aaron shall cast lots for the two goats, one lot for Yahweh and the other lot for the scapegoat. Then Aaron shall offer the goat on which the lot for Yahweh fell and make it a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot for the scapegoat fell shall be presented alive before Yahweh to make atonement upon it and send it into the wilderness as the scapegoat. As we look at verse 7, we see that Aaron is to bring two, gate, two goats before the Lord, and he's to cast lots for them. And according to the lots, one lot would be for the Lord, and the other lot would be for the scapegoat. If we drop down to verse 15, we see the function of the first goat. The first goat is a sin offering for the people. Aaron is to slaughter that goat outside of the Holy of Holies. And then he is to take the blood of that goat through the veil into the Holy of Holies. And he is to offer that blood as an atonement for the sin of the people of Israel. And it is there that God satisfies his wrath against the people of Israel for the offense that their sin is against him. Atonement is the action of God to restore sinful man to fellowship with himself through a sacrifice. But Jesus was a more perfect sacrifice who accomplished a more perfect atonement than this goat for all of those for whom he died. And we know that from the New Testament. We see that in Romans chapter 6. Verse 10 tells us that the death that Jesus died, he died to sin once and for all. Jesus' death was a better sacrifice than the death of the goat. Because while the Old Testament priest had to offer that sacrifice year after year after year, Jesus' death one time on one occasion satisfied God's wrath against all repentant sinners for all time. Isn't that good news? That's very comforting news to us today. If you drop down to verse 21 of our passage, you see the function of the second goat. This goat completes the atonement process by removing the sins of the people. Aaron would lay his hands on this goat and confess the sins of the people of Israel over this goat. A servant would then take the goat into the wilderness away from the people of Israel. Again, this was performed year after year after year because the sins of the people of Israel had to be removed again and again and again. But once again, 
Jesus accomplished a more perfect atonement than this goat, and that he took away the sins of the repentant sinner once for all. We, sat in, we see that in John chapter 1, verse 29. John the Baptist sees Jesus, and he says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John was speaking of the work of Jesus at the cross in which he would permanently remove the sin of everybody who placed their trust in him. Do you notice how Jesus performs both roles in the atonement process? He satisfies the Father's wrath against the repentant sinner, and he removes the sin of the repentant sinner. Jesus did both of these things when he hung on a cross outside of Jerusalem. He condescended to come into this world and be born of a virgin and live a perfect life so that he could offer up himself as a sacrifice that was worthy and pleasing to the Lord. And on that cross, he did exactly what the Lord had planned for him to do. And that was to satisfy the Father's wrath against everybody who would look to him as their Savior and their Lord. And then he would remove the sin of all of those who would look to him as their Savior and their Lord. So that the Father would never again charge their sin against them. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, I want you to ponder that for a moment. Take a minute to consider what it is that Christ has done for you. That he took your sin upon his body and he suffered in your place so that you could be reconciled to a holy God. And then he removed your sin from you so that you would never again be charged with that sin. You're never liable for that. That is wonderful, wonderful news. <laughs>